everyone, welcome to the afternoon sessions of the Farmers Forum. My name is David Trinkline. I'm on the faculty of the Plant Sciences Unit at the University of Missouri. And it's my pleasure to moderate the first uh, three hours worth of sessions. To begin with, I would like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Sanjun Gu, who is State Vegetable Extension Specialist as well as a faculty member at Lincoln University in Jefferson City. Before Dr. Gu arrived in Missouri, I don't think many Missourians at least heard of the concept of vegetable grafting, much less tomato grafting. Since his arrival, it's been kind of a standard best management practice, and today he's going to give us an update on some of the research he's been carried out in, in grafting. Dr. Gu. Thank you, Dave. I give one presentation before, I mean this morning for the seminar, and uh, let, me, let me get this started. Uh, this morning I talked about, uh, hold on, let me, let me move to the other one. You can see the outline over there, so this is for uh, today, whole day. So this morning I talked about uh, the introduction part and what, to why, and then we talked about the how. And this afternoon I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, my research at the Lincoln University. Um, before, you, before we start, um, for those who were not able to make to my presentation, I, I do have a handout which is actually our newsletter articles. And uh, my two assistants, Sean and uh, Catherine, are going to uh, distribute them to you. There to be, to be two. And there should be three articles, but I'm still working on the third one. So the first one is introduction about the vegetable grafting. Uh, the second one is about the tomato grafting. Uh, this morning, I discussed in detail about how to do grafting in general, not only for tomatoes, but also for pepper, for, uh, for uh, eggplants, for watermelon, cucumber, and cucurbit stuff. So if you are interested in my presentation, uh, send me an email so I can send you a PDF version. Um, so um, just give you a pre-warning, this afternoon's talk will be my research update, and it will be really dry. So you'll see a lot of figures and the graphic stuff, so it's not gonna be so colorful with pictures like this morning. And also, um, I wasn't able to get all the data analyzed for this year. Um, we, we made some mistake there and by not including the controls. <laughs> so, so the result will be primarily from last year. But um, uh, you, you find what uh, we did last year. So how many of you have uh, attended my seminar this morning? Okay, um, so how many of you think you are very confident with uh, grafting part already? One hand, two hands, three hands, pretty good. So, like I said, today and uh, this afternoon will be a research update. I will not give you a lot of information about the general, general uh, grafting technology stuff. Uh, it will be just some research. Okay. Again, uh, my name is Sanjin, and uh, Sanjin Gu, I'm uh, with Lincoln University Extension. Uh, I have been, with, uh, been in Missouri for almost five, five years now. Time, fa time just passes fast. Okay, um, what we did last year, we did uh, two research at least, two res pro research projects. Number one is the grafting compatibility study with heirloom tomatoes because we now introduced the idea to our farmers about uh, tomato grafting, they always ask me questions. Whether, you know, if I have an heirloom, can I just go try them? You know, do you have any research data to see what they're gonna take? Because you put two things together, there's a good chance they will not take. So that's the reason behind this research. Of course, people are interested in, uh, in, in uh, high tunnel uh, or field 
heirloom tomato production, especially for organic or for, or for farmers markets. Um, so that's why I did this research. And uh, um, for those who, those of you who don't really know about uh, grafting yet, um, I can tell you some advantage. Number one, it will have a, a disease, especially soil borne disease resistance because of the rootstock. And yeah, number two, uh, if you choose a good rootstock, you usually have uh, enhanced vigor, and your yield usually be enhanced, to be increased. Uh, and also, uh, uh, high tunnel has been getting popular, and we use high tunnel for season extension, especially in, win uh, in early fall or uh, early spring or later spring. So we want to catch maybe two more months time to produce more warm seeding vegetables as well as some of the cold seeding vegetables. So grafting uh, with correct root stock, you do enhance your scion uh, cold hardiness. So just some background information for you. Okay, um, for this research, what we did, uh, this is just the introduction part. We don't have to go through this again. Um, what we did last year, we chose about 21 uh, heirloom tomatoes, and uh, we grafted them on two rootstocks, uh, Beaufort and a Maxifort. So we used the tubing grafting method. We tried all those uh, heirloom tomatoes. You can see some of them, like a Kentucky beef steak, brandy wine, uh, pink. Heart, I like this one actually. So what we did briefly, we used the tubing method. This shows you how you do it. And for those of you who went to my talk this morning, it should look familiar. Uh, this picture was from, uh, those pictures were from Dr. Uh, Revert from uh, Ken Ken uh, Kansas State University. And basically what you do, you grew your, your rootstock and your sign on a similar size. You cut your rootstock, um, either before or, or be uh, up, up below or uh, over the cutting lengths. I prefer this one because later you don't have to remove suckers. And put uh, a tube on it. This is called a tube grafting method because the tubes were designed specifically for this method. And uh, you slide this tube in and then you cut your scion, different angle, 45 degree and you slide this in, make sure the two surfaces contact each other, and that'll be it. Of course, later you have to move into a growth chamber to, to heal them. Um, so basically, for this uh, uh, acclimation process, for day one to three, you keep to close to 100% darkness and uh, close to 100% humidity. And uh, after three days, you slowly reduce darkness and uh, keep relatively high humidity. And then after seven to 10 days, they are as normal if they take. Uh, one lesson I learned from this year was uh, the temperature, even though it's not listed here, the temperature plays very important role in the survival. Uh, I guess um, you don't want to keep your temperature before 80 degree Fahrenheit. And uh, uh, room temperature will be actually very nice. Uh, the story was, for, for my, my observation was before a meeting, um, I grafted something for some kids, and uh, I just dropped them in my office. And then they came back seven days later, they all survived without any cover. So that gave me the hint that the temperature is very, in, very critical. Uh, my office temperature in summertime is about 70 degrees or lower. So they, they survived really well. And the humidity maybe just less than 50. So keep that in mind. Okay, um, we did the greenhouse research. This is my growth chamber. We did just build some frame and cover with some plastic. That's it. Uh, I do have a, a household a humidifier inside. Uh, this is just show you the picture of the grafted uh, uh, transplant. And uh, those are survived transplants. So those are greenhouse study. Um, I graft them and to see uh, the survival, whether they are successful or not. So here's the result. Like I said, it's all graphic stuff. And this is my heirloom variety. And this is my survival rate, rate with one is 100%. So this is on Beaufort. 
the Rustak Beaufort. You can see the lowest one is the branding one red is actually not too bad, 80%. By the way, I grabbed it all this by myself. <laughs> it took me a lot of time. So most of them are close to 100% take. So it was really, really good. And uh, for Maxi Fort, however, I did see some difference. And uh, you can see this uh, mortgage lifter and the, uh, I, don't even, I don't even know how to read it, the ACE 55, they were particularly low. I tried to find out why uh, it was this low. I guess I probably was just too tired, I don't know. So, uh, however, if you see the statistics, you see, even those 80% on Buford survival and the 72% on Maxiford, by uh, the uh, statistics analysis, they are not significant difference. So even though there are some exceptions there, uh, we will see in general uh, there's not there was not at least in the greenhouse uh, setting incompatibility issue. So which means you can graft them, they can take really well, and they can grow. And then, whether they're going to be okay in the field or not, we don't know. Because earlier, just like, a, just like the, uh, uh, the grapes, you graft them, they look really well, you plant them, some of them, you know, they, they will die or slowly reduce the vigor after 10, 15 years. So we did the greenhouse study just to see whether grafting is successful or not. And then we plant them in the field to test them in a real uh, environment, especially uh, in the open field. And last year was a good year to test because it was hot and dry. Uh, so we, we planned that those successfully uh, survived uh, grafted the transplants in the field. This is how we did it in the open field. It was really dry. And uh, we, we measured the growth and yield. Um, yield data is not available yet, I believe, because last year we just didn't have uh, tomatoes until later in the growing season and when the weather was cold and we harvested a lot of green tomatoes, not, not red ones. So we, we measured the uh, stem diameter and then we measured the stem diameter above and below the graft union trying to find uh, uh, index to see, uh, to measure the uh, compatibility. So, so here's a one picture showing this uh, brand new wine pink grafted on Beaufort. You can see the roads, and uh, here is graft union, here is graft union, here is graft union. And some of the plants we actually planted a little bit too, too deep. Uh, however, you don't see a lot of roots growing out above the graft union, you know, which was okay. We don't want any roots come out from, from the scion part. Okay, um, I split this, this is graft union, and uh, you see the picture here. Uh, you do see a uh, kind of a diagonal line here showing the graft union, but even though it's here, it's showing this. So this one is non-grafted. You see, visually, you don't see a lot of difference. So, which means they, they do really well. If you see the, the connection here, this is a scion, this is your rootstock. There's no obvious stop, stop there, even though you can see something there. So. I draw a line there just to show the graft union over there. And for stem diameter, we always tell people that if by choosing a good rootstock, uh, your, gro the, your scion growth vigor can be enhanced. So we measure the stem diameter. You can see on Buford or Maxifort, all those stems were bigger than the non-grafted control. So it does show the difference on, the, on your on the thickness of your, your, your stem. That's one way to see uh, you have a enhanced vigor. Uh, then for the diameter ratio above and below, of course, non-grafted will be zero. I mean, it will be one. And for Buford and Maxiford, the graft union actually did something to the plant. So the above the graft union is a little bit thicker than the lower one. Even though visually by your bare eyes you don't see the difference, if you measure, with, measure them with the caliber, you actually see the difference. So we do see some difference over there. And the conclusion here is, um, uh, well here is, uh, 
Well, this is about uh, the the greenhouse trial. Uh, we had better luck with Maxford than Buford. And then we know, I just said that we had a bigger or thicker uh, stems for the graphite ones. So the most important uh, conclusion for this part is uh, a grafting compatibility seemed not to be an issue. So at least in the tested uh, uh, 21 varieties. So if you have an heirloom tomato, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm about uh, maybe 90% sure you will not have an incompatibility if you, for, for, for uh, uh, tomatoes. You know, the reading incompatibility is so important uh, just because uh, if you think about it, you do graft, you, you graft uh, watermelon or cucumber or melon, you know, if you add some bitterness to your watermelon, I don't think people will like it. But for tomatoes, I don't think it's a big challenge. So um, then again, that, that year, we, we did some uh, um, uh, heirloom trial with, graft, with grafting in the high tunnels. And uh, we, I have two high tunnels. One is double layer poly. Uh, the other one is single layer poly. So we did some research on that. And uh, the, with some, uh, what we want to do to find out um, uh, if grafting will enhance the heirloom tomato production in high tunnels. Uh, number two, to find out whether a single layer versus uh, a double layer poly will do, some diff uh, do something to the heirloom tomatoes, especially grafted ones in the high tunnels. And uh, I, I placed one sentence here, tomato grafting in the high tunnel could be a perfect combination. Uh, the reason behind that, uh, you know, people started to do uh, high tunnels, uh, very largely because the NRCS got involved. They, get, they, get, they, they got involved with uh, the cost share program, so we have seen a lot high tunnels everywhere almost in the Midwest. So, when people try to use new high tunnels, they don't have a, at least the, they don't, maybe just beginner's luck, I don't know. But their soil is kind of new. They don't have a lot of soil borne disease problems. But in the future, since high tunnel is a little bit cost, costly to build, to maintain, and you give you more money, so you tend to produce more of your cash crop like tomatoes. And the rotation is limited in the high tunnel. And you want to plant, uh, you want to apply more manures or compost. So sooner or later, your soil disease will build up. Your soil salinity may, may, uh, may build up if you're not careful enough. So by doing that, you cause a lot of trouble for your production. And then, and you cannot use methyl bromide anymore because it's banned for its uh, uh, environmental damage. So you cannot use fumigants to do that, the new one may not be uh, as well as the one we used before, like mesobromide, or they may have some environmental issue as well. Or, simply because you are organic or, or natural farmer, you don't want to do anything with that. So, but doing high, doing, but, but uh, adapting the grafting technology, you can avoid those uh, fumigation part. So that's what we did. We do the two cyan variety. We have an ananas and the German pink, two big fruit uh, type uh, variety, um, pretty good quality. And uh, we graft them into Beaufort, Emperador, and Maxi Fort. So this year, I wasn't able to find this variety. And for some reason, seed companies don't carry over uh, seeds over years anymore. I don't know why. So I couldn't find this one. Uh, for rootstock, I have a Buford and this. And for the combinations, for German pink, I do have a self-grafted German pink as control. I have a non-grafted, grafted on itself as control. But for ananas, I didn't have enough seeds. So that's the uh, uh, combination of grafting, grafted tomatoes. And um, I can tell you I didn't take this picture. I didn't, really. Um, it's a little fuzzy, but this is German pink. And uh, this is Ananas Nora. It's very tasty variety. Um, same thing, we do the tubing grafting method. We graft in the greenhouse. Last year, we were late, so we planted them in May. 
usually we will in, in this area we will plant them in the high tunnel late week of March or early April, but we were late. Uh, we were not uh, getting the seeds in time. For some reason, the seed company uh, agreed to send me the seeds. They forgot to do it. <laughs> so anyhow, and then the first batch of uh, the the grafting grafted stuff, uh, it were killed with one weekend. Uh, my I guess my technician was not on campus, and the student worker didn't do a good job. They just they just cooked <laughs> in when they were in the chamber. So in the greenhouse with sunny light, with black stuff on it, they were killed. So um, and people ask me, did you fire fire your uh, student worker? I said, no, I didn't. I give give him another chance. Uh, another story. So this is my high tone of 30 by 96. Uh, with rich vent, and uh, this is single layer. This is double layer. It's uh, it's a Zimmerman's brand. And yeah, remember, we're in Zoom 5B, and uh, like I said, we planted them late, and then we ran right into this heat uh, uh, weather. So for quite a few while, we didn't have a uh, we didn't have a harvest because it was too hot. But however. We kept them there, or kept them going until late fall. So uh, we do have some data for last year, and this is the, how my plants look like. I do have an automated uh, system to to drop the uh, curtain down and up, and also a controller to control the ridge vent. So I had a pretty good system um, to automatically manipulate my temperature, just because I cannot be there every day. Neither did my technician. So, you know, this is a, when I was preparing this talk yesterday, um, I used one previous presentation. I have a, the extreme hot and dry summer in 2011, but it wasn't true anymore. This year was even bad. So I removed that word, but still tells you, you know, in late June to, to almost the early part of August, we have a really, really, to this part as well, really bad uh, weather, and uh, we know that, uh, I think I have another line here, you know, pretty much here, 75, uh, you see the plant growth for tomatoes getting influenced. Above 97, I think pollination will, will stop, and if it's about 120, 102 degree, the whole plant may just, may just not grow. So this is especially true for, uh, for heirloom tomatoes, which primarily is just indeter indeterminate. So you can see I do have some heat tolerant uh, varieties there. Unfortunately, this is my variety trial part. That's not the, the grafted part. But other just like this for a long time, no fruit because pollination was, was impossible. So we do see some temperature difference between the two high tunnels, the single layer versus double layer. Basically, in the early, in the, early in the morning, well, in the, in the morning, the, the, the single layer has a higher temperature. And then the night, at night, you, you double layer has a higher temperature. This is May. Uh, and then the PR is the photosynthetic activity radiation. You see the difference between the two uh, layer system, you know, in the high tunnels. So if you, um, if you think about um, maintaining the heat in a high tunnel, you may think about uh, using double layer. But uh, in the in zone 6B or above, I don't think it's necessary. Just give you some um, environmental factors there to help explain the, uh, explain the result. So that for the yield, this is single layer. You have a, we have a green uh, German pink, German pink on German pink, and then on three rootstocks. You see pretty much similar from um, August here, but basically you don't have, I didn't have any harvest. And then we, I do have a, some harvest starting in the late, uh, well, early part of October until uh, the frost came, in, well, not a frost, the freeze temperature came in. Um, I was actually in Pennsylvania for a meeting where my technician students are harvest those tomatoes. So you see, really, you don't see a lot of big difference. For double year, you do, you do see some difference here. For this one, the green line is uh, German pink on Beaufort. And we always see the, the Maxi Fort will uh, transform the most vigor to your scion. But uh, under that condition, you know, if it is so hot, 
Pilfort is less vigorous variety, uh, rootstock variety actually didn't, di did better than others. And uh, for this one, you can see the non graphite one overall performed the worst. So we still see some difference in double layer polys. For, for, for the uh, ananas, you see that the similar trend, but you don't see a lot of big difference here. So for the double layer, uh, this one on this Emperador rootstock did a little bit better than others, similar to this one. So if put this in together for, uh, for the ananas, German pink, we see varied difference uh, between uh, the rootstock treatment, you know, different root rootstock um, sign combinations. For example, this one, the double layer seems to be better for this one as well, but the others may not. So, so it varies, depends on the variety. But for ananas, the other variety, you see the double layer did better. So we do see the difference between the two types of high tunnels when you graft the tomatoes. Uh, so this is result, you know, generally speaking, I don't see a lot of difference between the grafted ones and non-grafted ones, even though for, the, for uh, I think for, for NS NOR, uh, one rootstock variety performed better, and uh, we see the difference, you know, the, the non-grafted tend to be lower yield. But uh, because the heat last year, it didn't show the potential difference, so I cannot see the significantly different. Um, and, but in the field, in, in, the, in the greenhouse, I did see that uh, the grafted ones were more vigorous. Here is the aerosol soil temperature was different between the single double layer high tunnels. So basically, the take home message for you is uh, uh, grafting can enhance vigor, number one. Number two, uh, the double layer will be better. And the weather, you know, the next three for whether the, the grafting had a benefit or advantage on this trial, uh, you know, I cannot tell you. But this year, we may have a better result. However, well, this year we tried the same variety on Scion, different rootstock, one, two, three, four, five. However, we, when I was trying to analyze data, I found out uh, the control uh, were not included there. I mean, we were, data was there, but were, for the arranged data were not there, so it wasn't able to do the stats analysis. St the statistic analysis. So I'll present the data probably at uh, the Great Plains Conference in January and also going to post the results on our website. So you get this sooner or later. Okay, um, this is a just quick update and again this is just a resu research result. I think I have a couple minutes for questions. Yes. Cantaloupe fall in the same category as watermelons? Uh, yeah, his question is um, um, whether people have been doing research or, or, or demonstration with uh, cucurbit stuff like watermelons, cucumbers. Um, I haven't done this yet. I have uh, collected uh, uh, three cucumber ver uh, rootstock varieties which can also be used for watermelon and the melon. So I'm going to do some research with cucumber, the English cucumber type this year. Uh, Dr. Xin Zhao from Uni University of Florida, she's been doing a uh, melon cantaloupe grafting study. And uh, there's another USDA guy doing watermelon. So there's a big uh, specialty crop research initiative grant. Uh, it is looking at different uh, aspects of grafting. So uh, that grant started last year. I'm, a, I'm assuming results will start to come out next year. But in China, they graft all watermelons and uh, cucumbers and melons in the, uh, uh, in the greenhouse and high tunnel settings. So they are doing great, yeah. It's a similar process as melons and cucumbers. Yes, yes. For, for all cucurbits, the grafting message will be similar. And uh, the result may vary because if you're talking about watermelon and the melon, you're talking about the sugar content. So the sometimes if you're not careful and choose the wrong variety, rooster variety, the, the, the quality may be, 
may be reduced. However, the research done by USD people with watermelon, they found out uh, it, you know, if you grafted them, it enhanced the shelf life. Other questions? Um, what about as far as like other online resources where you know, uh, you know, the in-depth uh, specifics of grafting, planting schedules, and that kind of thing? Is there like any more like online resources or books that you might suggest for vegetable grafting in general? Um, there are quite a few publications for uh, farmers. It's extension publications. Um, there are some research projects as well. Uh, I know that in, in, in heart science, in heart technology, there are some publications on grafted tomatoes. And uh, there is a review in heart science on grafted uh, wa uh, watermelons and other cucurbits. So uh, our, I don't know how good you are with uh, scientific journal, but at least you can try. If you want to you wanna do the uh, uh, scholar.gogo.com, uh, you can get a lot of scientific information there. 